Well, ladies and gents, the Lord of the Rings is worse. Uh, believe it or not, it's, get, it's getting worse. Uh, way, way worse. Um, but I think what's funny about this is this apparently comes from super fans. Super fans that don't know anything about Tolkien. Don't know anything about the origins of the lore. Uh, and this is them basically saying, yeah, we, we love the fact that, you know, you've swapped out uh, everything for reasons, right? And what I mean by that is, of course, like Tolkien based this on uh, Europe and Britain, um, very specifically, uh, to give uh, Britain, that's what he believed in, to give Britain like a sort of a myth and a legend unto their own. You know, we, we wouldn't go to Africa and go, right, let's take your myth and legend and chuck a bunch of white people in it, right? Like, that's, that's just stupid. But then in Western uh, society, that's, you know, that's the rules we live by for some bizarre, strange reason. Uh, everything has to be, you know, a, a wash with one another. Uh, nothing can be appreciated as it should be without some form of offence being taken, which is just, uh, I mean, it's just sad, you know. If you feel like you have to see something, I think that's just sad. So whenever I do a video like this, inevitably I always lose subscribers because people go, you're a bigot. No. You know, I sit there and I can justify it quite reasonably. Um, but basically, the offshoot is always going to annoy someone with this kind of stuff. So, cry me a river elsewhere, I guess. But let's take a look, because this is the ongoing saga uh, of Lord of the Rings. Uh, the Rings of Power. Uh, but again, remember, this is super fans. So, the Rings of Power official Prime video, super fans, uh, puts the focus on racial identity politics. Um... Which, is, again, is is really sad. Uh, there's nothing about this which is hugely positive. I just think it's really sad. Um, but, you know, whatever. I guess let's dive into it. So, uh, Prime Video and Amazon Studios shared a lot of the rings, the rings of power. Super fans review. This is them running cover trying to push, uh, you know, the series in a positive light. Because they're like, look, look, look. We'll wheel out a bunch of fans that do love it. It's like, yeah, but they don't, they. They're not actual fans. Um, so the Super Fans Review was shared to the Amazon Prime Video UK YouTube channel. It was hosted by Mr. Isla, a BBC Asian Network presenter, and featured the Fellowship of Influencers. I mean, what a... Uh, what a bunch of douches. Uh, Chanel Williams, Joel Rochester... And Kelsey Ellison. I've never heard of these people. I don't care. Um, but these are them. So, of course, we know what this is going to be. They're all going to be bum-licking Amazon Prime. When asked by uh, Isla, Isla, whatever, to describe the teaser trailer in three words, Williams responded first. Breathtaking. I literally didn't breathe. Exhilarating and intriguing. Fantastic. Uh, Rochester would say... Uh, that they like the expansive nature because we're getting this whole new look into the second age on screen and it's going to be so amazing. I also want to say representative because we're getting like more diversity within this series. But then again, just you like humor me. You're a super fan. Why were you a fan before this? You know, did you need the diversity to be a super fan? Like, humour me and answer that question. You know, do you need that to be a super fan? Because apparently you're already a super fan. So you didn't need it before, did you? So why do you need it now? Odd. Really odd. Like, we're seeing our first black elf. We're seeing the first female dwarf. Without a beard, you super fan. Douche. I'm very looking forward to looking at that. I mean, it just sounds scripted as well. Uh, and then I guess, like, intriguing, because obviously this period of history within the Middle-earth is very rife with notions of the plot of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings and seeing how the Rings of Power are being forged. What? And I guess, like, intriguing, because obviously this period of history within the Middle-earth is very rife with notions of the plot of The Hobbit. No, it's not. What are you on about? That doesn't even make any sense. Uh, and then Ellison said, I would say awestruck, mystified, and starstruck. Starstruck with who? Who who, who made you starstruck? 
Anyway, the next bit is Le Begin saying, So, in the teaser, and obviously there's a lot of stuff that you've probably read about it, we're introduced to the first black elf. We're introduced to the first female dwarf. Now, diversity, especially on screen as an actor, means a lot to me growing up. I hardly saw that watching TV and watching a lot of films and stuff. I never saw people of my colour, so it's exciting to see that diversity is being explored in the Rings of Power. Why does it need to be? Is this not a story about the Rings of Power? Why do we need to explore diversity within that story? Could there not be, ladies and gents, uh, an African myth and legend which we could bring to Amazon Prime that would be fantastic for diversity? Is there not? I'm sure that... I mean, there is. I mean, it's a rhetorical question. Fucking course there is. So why do we need to explore diversity in something which was, you know, very ang anglophile, right? Like, I I'm confused. Why does everything have to be a vehicle for diversity? Why? Especially when there's a reason behind it. Like, there's a reason why it wasn't in there. So it's disrespectful to the author, disrespectful to the law. But remember, these, these, these are super fans, ladies and gents. They love Lord of the Rings. Their rings get wet over Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Fuck, I can't believe I said that. Anyway. <laughs> uh, he then asks, what's your thoughts on the casting decisions? Here we go, ladies and gents. Scripted, I bet you anything. I'm very excited for it because Tolkien's work has always been uh, about being inclusive. I mean, we see it through the Fellowship. Like a bunch of people from different backgrounds coming together in order to face a common enemy, being Sauron. Yep, perfect. So why do they all have to look like you? Like, that that's it right there, right? Inclusion. Is, is that not it? Can, can you not get the same message without, you know, disrespecting the creator? I mean, we can. Like, you've just highlighted that we can. Oh, God. And just seeing the casting decisions, it's really, really exciting to see. It's just going to mean so much to me personally, because it's getting that representation in Middle Earth. I mean, are you for real? It's going to mean so much to me because I'm going to get representation in Middle Earth, a fictional bloody location, based on, you know, Roman, sort of Roman Empire-ish, uh, pre-Europe. Do you know what I mean? Like, what? What is going on? These people. Ah, oh, it's so sad. Young kids are going to see that on screen. And it's going to be really nice for them to be like, Oh, hey, there's someone that looks just like me. At being an elf and a dwarf. Do these people really hear themselves? Oh, my God. Next, you're going to be like, Right, we need, we need gay rocks and gay plants. Because we really need representation in everything. Some things don't... You don't have to see it. Like, not in everything, guys. Jesus. And it just fills me with a lot of hope for the future of the Rings of Power. Definitely not. And seeing much more diversity being included as well. Uh, Isla adds, it's going to be inspiring, right? For the next generation. Watch to confirm. Definitely. Yeah, man. Williams is then prompted to give her thoughts, which she does. In the original film series, which I absolutely adored. There you go, so you loved it. But there are not many women in it. Yes, there is. And they're all, they're all, they're all amazing. They all kick ass. All of the women in the original films kick ass. And the three women who are in it never speak to one another. Why do all the women need to speak to one another? What? These people are like mentally defective. So it'll be so cool to be able to see more female representation. You've got three females, but apparently it's not representative because they're not chit-chatting to one another. I mean, what kind of representation do you want? Do, you, do they need to just sit around having a chin wag getting their nails done like what you did to maybe see them actually interact with one another very excited to see it you're an idiot uh, Ellison would then add it just makes me so excited for the next generation and because as you said pointing towards Williams like growing up like I was still excited about being an elf or a hobbit and joining in uh, even though I wasn't represented so there you go you didn't need to be represented you still wanted to join in there you go argument dismissed like either, like my disability or my queerness wasn't represented. But just makes me so happy, makes me, my heart warm, going to be seeing younger people. I mean, right, okay, so you want, you want disabled, black, queer, dwarfs or something, elves. I mean, these people have serious problems. 
They really do. Uh, after highlighting the show's racial identity politics through its casting, the so-called influencers then give vague statements about what intrigued them the most. Ellison detailed the various uh, rings saying, rings happen or being formed. Her answer appears to be cut again. Uh, in the law, Sauron basically helps forge the rings. And so I think they start making some initial rings that don't have much power. What? What? How are, how are these... How are these super fans with what they're saying? Rochester goes on to reiterate the expansiveness of the show is what intrigues him and how Prime Video uh, plans to explore the Second Age. Williams and Ellison would also express that they want to know what's actually happening. Where are they? Who's involved? And Ellison even asks, why are people fighting and what for? So you should know this, you, you bunch of idiots. Uh, from there, Isla asks about the main characters and the conversation quickly gets back to identity politics. Of course it does. Isla, showing his ignorance of not only Tolkien's novels, but Jackson's films as well, describes Galadriel saying, In the movies, she's been very flowy, more serene. She's not doing much. And this time, she's like full-on action, as he slams his fist into his palm. Williams then adds, We're so far in the past, and I'm so excited to see this younger version of her, and there's so much. I'm definitely excited to see this kind of younger and maybe more inexperienced Galadriel, and how we see through the rings of power, like... How the experiences will shape her. You're not, you're not fans. You're a bunch of idiots. The rest of the video sees the super fans talking about their trip to Mallorca uh, to watch the trailer. A little bit of their fan theories and then explaining why you should watch the trailer. Ironically, after putting the focus on real world identity politics, it does state uh, you're just going to be transported to another world. And you're just going to forget your own for the whole time you're going to watch it. No, you're not. Because you need to see everything that you see um, in the shows that you watch. Because you're all... Uh, apparently mentally defective somehow. Anyway, there you go. This is trash, isn't it? There's literally no no two ways about it. It is total trash. So let me know what you think down below. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. Cheers. Take care.